Welcome back to the channel. It's no news that our oceans are one of the most polluted natural resources with roughly 171 trillion plastic particles that, if gathered, would weigh roughly 2.3 million tons. This basically means that there is more plastic than fish in these oceans. Sounds disastrous, but what if I told you that the beginning of the destruction of our oceans was a government-permitted scheme from which our oceans saw no return? This is the story of how 2 million tires were dumped into the ocean. Why and how did this happen? Let's find out in today's video. To understand exactly what happens, we need to dial back to the 1960s. Back in the day and earlier, the ocean was basically treated like a dumping ground. All sorts of trash, industrial waste, metal scraps, radioactive materials, plastics and moat, you name it were carelessly tossed into the deep blue without anyone really keeping tabs on just how much junk was being thrown in. This, to no surprise, caused immense damage to the marine life in the ocean and was one of the leading factors to environmental pollution. But fast forward to the 1970s and there was a new villain that entered into the scenes of polluting the oceans which changed it forever. These were America's tire factories which were churning out car tires like there was no tomorrow. Producing subpar quality tires, and that too, in excessive quantities, the American factories were producing tires way more than required. They had an excess of both used and unused tires which had to be discarded somewhere. And what better place to dump them, other than the endless blues? Now, you might be wondering, how much would they possibly dump in the ocean? A staggering 170 million tires a year, my friend. Yep, you heard that right. With production on such a massive scale, the pile of used tires was getting bigger and bigger. But the obvious question that might pop into anyone's head is, why didn't they try recycling these wheels? Well, they did, but not in the way you would have expected them. The cost of recycling would mean a lower rate of profits. So instead of caring about the environment, the American tire companies resorted to recycling, the dumping them in massive landfills or scattering them around. But finally, a savior came along for some much needed justice. Enter the Broward Artificial Reef Incorporated, or Barnick, with a grand plan in 1972. You might think that the Barnick would have created a grand scheme where they would have banned the dumping of tires and punished the existing companies for doing so with some insane fines. But that's where you would have gone wrong. The Barnick had an insane plan. They said, let's kill two birds with one stone by solving the problem of getting rid of all those old car tires and creating new homes for fish at the same time. Their genius idea? Bury two million tires on the ocean floor to make an artificial reef where fish would flock to. Today, anyone with the last few brain cells alive and working would have recognized how this was a terrible idea. But back in the 70s, this was groundbreaking. It's still uncertain if it was propaganda or genuine dumbness that led the Barnick to resort to such actions. But we will let you decide. But here is the most astonishing part. All this while there is probably just one question that's been running in all of your minds. What on earth was the government doing while this was happening? You would assume that the government would step up and stop the deterioration of our environment on such a massive scale, right? Well, here is the good news. The government did step up, but not in the way you would expect or want it to. The Florida government gave the green light on dumping the tires into the ocean. Picture this. A fleet of around 100 boats and navy ships teaming up with a good life rubber and tires company, who were experts in tying up tires with metal and nylon, together dumped innumerable tires into the ocean, hoping to create a haven for marine life. The vision was to turn the ocean into a better place by providing a new habitat for its creatures, giving them a place to thrive. But, as it turned out, this grand plan didn't quite go as swimmingly as they'd hoped. Instead of thriving marine paradise, those tire reefs started to crumble, causing a whole new set of problems. The Good Life Company went the extra mile by tossing in a massive golden-colored tire to spice things up and aid their cause. Their plan and hope was that among all those regular tires being dumped into the ocean, there was this colossal shiny golden one, standing out like a beacon of hope for marine life. It was their way of saying, hey fishy friends, come check out this swanky new hangout spot we've made just for you. But alas, even the glitziest of tires couldn't save the day when things took a turn for the worse. 
some of those stars that were bundled together with tough nylon and sturdy steel broke free and created absolute chaos on the ocean floor. They were scattered across an area the size of a whopping 31 football fields. But the disaster doesn't stop there. These rogue tires are washing up on beaches, causing a real headache for coastal communities. Thousands of them have even jammed up against a natural reef nearby, blocking its growth and wreaking havoc on marine life. The steel used to tie things up rusted in the salty water, cutting through and harming the ocean's inhabitants. This not only polluted the water but also caused pain and damage to the fish and other creatures. Originally, the idea behind dumping tires into the ocean was to create a thriving environment for coral reefs, offering shelter and food to marine life. However, instead of flourishing, the tires became troublemakers, wreaking havoc on the ecosystem. The lessons that we all learned? Sometimes, even the biggest ideas can lead to even bigger headaches if they are not thought through properly. Though it was late, the people realized the damage that was making was insurmountable and it finally dawned on them after a decade. They realized in the 1980s that dumping all those tires was a real mess up. But with heaps of rubber in the water, they were stuck scratching their heads on what to do next. Mother Nature tried her hand at cleanup during Hurricane Opal in 1995, flinging about 1,000 tires onto Florida shores, and again in 1998 during Hurricane Bonnie, which dumped thousands more along North Carolina's beaches. Fast forward to 2001, when NCU chipped in $30,000 for a cleanup effort. Divers took the plunge, but soon realized it was no walk in the park. Despite their best efforts, they only managed to haul up 1,600 tires, a mere drop in the ocean compared to the estimated 50 to 90 million needing removal. It was a daunting task, to say the least. In 2007, the cavalry arrived in the form of the military, pitching in to remove 10,000 tires. But a sticker shock came with a bill for transporting and disposing of these tires, ringing in at a staggering $2 million courtesy of the Florida government's pockets. Why didn't the government tap into the deep pockets of the tire companies responsible for this mess? They were quick to lend a hand in dumping, but when it came to cleanup, they vanished into thin air. It's like they threw a party and left a mess for someone else to clean up. Despite the government's efforts, by 2009, they had only managed to scrub away a measly 7,200 tires, barely making a dent less than 10% of the total mess. They threw more money at the problem in 2016, hiring IDC for a cool $4.3 million to dive in and clear out another 250,000 tires between 2016 and 2019. Yet still, a sea of tires continues to mar the ocean floor, wrecking havoc on marine life. Despite the tireless efforts of 4Ocean and their innovative approach of turning ocean waste into stylish bracelets, the battle against ocean pollution is far from over. Can you believe it? Even after 50 years, those pesky tires are still lurking in the depths of our oceans, causing trouble for marine life. It's a stark reminder that our actions have consequences, and what may seem like an easy solution at the time, like dumping tires into the ocean, can have long-lasting effects. The government is now faced with the daunting task of cleaning up this mess, and it's no small feat. They've signed a five-year contract, dubbed SW348, to tackle this issue, starting from February 17, 2023 until February 16, 2028. Let's hope that by the end of this contract, Florida's government can finally breathe a sigh of relief, knowing they've made significant progress in riding their oceans of these tires without breaking the bank. 50 long years have passed, and the amount of money spent on this cleanup effort has been staggering, beyond what anyone could have imagined. Yet, despite all this time and effort, the recovery process is still ongoing. We can only hope and pray that one day, the creatures living in our oceans can go back to their natural way of life, enjoying a wonderful environment that's free from toxins and pollution. It's a reminder of the importance of preserving our planet for future generations. What are your thoughts on this topic? Let us know everything in the comments down below. And while you're at it, make sure you smash that subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you never miss another update from our channel. We will see you very soon with a brand new video.